Hello, 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 hello. This is my final video. I can tell that you're all deeply distraught. Um, but I have come to the end of my degree and I am drawing a line there. No more YouTube channel for me. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Um, but I also thought this would be a good opportunity for a very short and sweet reflection on the last five years. I have now started my PhD, I'm three weeks in and it's great. Um, but it's been a whirlwind of finishing exams in lockdown, graduating in lockdown, interviews in lockdown, starting my PhD, moving to London eight months ago. So I thought it would be good to have a little recap and then say goodbye. Um, so. Yeah, the, the reason I started this channel um, was to sort of answer the questions that I couldn't find answers to when I was looking to go back to university, change career, mature student, study physics, um, and just sort of give people um, a, a view into my world and what it was like for me. Obviously, it's my personal experience. It's not the same as everybody else's, but it's always nice to hear how others uh, do things especially when it feels like you kind of go from 18 university through phd without stopping and people never change careers which is rubbish i think that was the uh, lesson i learned the fastest was even though i was surrounded by physics lecturers professors academics every single one of them had a very different journey and very quickly made me feel like what I was doing was completely normal. Um, but when I, before I even started, I, my first goal was to get accepted onto the course. Um, I wasn't even sure if that was possible. And then once I started the foundation year, because I don't have A-levels in maths and physics and hadn't done math since GCSE in 2003, and I started my degree in 2016, I think. So it had been 13 years and, man, I wasn't sure if I could do it. Um, so I'd loved physics from the age of eight, astronomy particularly, and then carried on reading popular science books, attending lectures, uh, watching documentaries and things like that. And I, I loved it, but I wasn't sure if I, that would translate to being able to study the subject. So I started the foundation year. It was tough, but I had some great support. The department there, that was, that was sat in the Department of Engineering. Um, they were, all of my lecturers were great. I knew one of them from my job beforehand, um, which helped. It meant I could always go up to him, hi Mo, uh, and just have a chat and that made things a lot easier. Um, and then I moved into the physics department for my first year and that was really hard. If you've been following my videos, you'll know that there's physics sucks. <laughs> um, I think I was expecting to leave that foundation year with all of that maths and physics knowledge that I'd worked really hard to learn. Um, at my fingertips from the foundation year. But, you know, I'd only really practiced it a handful of times. Um, it was still very, very new to me. So when I started first year and everyone around me had practiced it a million times and felt much more comfortable doing maths and physics, to me it still felt really alien. Um, you know, even sort of um, things like SUVAT and kinetic energy and potential energy, even those concepts were just couldn't formulate the questions properly and things like that. So um, I now know that that just takes practice and you sort of build up an intuition. So I hadn't built up my intuition uh, and I was expecting to have done after that year. So that first year was hard and I was hard on myself and a lot of people told me that as well. And the department were really supportive. They sort of pulled me through that. Um, it was phys like the physics was challenging, um, but it was mentally rough and I had to figure out I'd never had imposter syndrome before, so I had to give myself a proper talking to um, and figure out what worked for me. And working with others really, really helps. Being able to ask questions and not feeling stupid, that kind of thing really helps. So Nottingham were able to provide that for me. So I got through that first year and then into my second year where I felt way more comfortable. Um, and it was in that second year when I was already making these YouTube videos that sort of came to the attention of the the department and they asked me to get involved in their social media. They hired me to do their social media and over the summer I was working with Mark Fromhold who's now 
a friend, but probably a mentor throughout my five years of, of physics. Um, he asked me to make a video for this exhibition that he and another group were sort of collaborating on down in London. So I did that. And Mark's work is sort of uh, quantum technologies based. And he was working with someone else who's also um, in the same uh, funding, quantum technologies funding, but it was a medical physics side, Matt Brooks, and I got to go down and meet them and work with them, and I was exposed to all of the research that they were doing, and it was amazing, and I got to be at the Royal Society Summer Science Festival and see all of these other exhibitions, and that was exactly what I needed in my second year, because I knew that I probably wanted to do a PhD, but I had no idea what area I wanted to go into. There was astronomy that I loved as a kid, quantum physics, that I'd, particle physics that I'd read about, um, and cosmology that are sort of the, you know, the poster children for physics. But I knew that there was obviously going to be so much more in between that I hadn't learned about yet. Um, and this sort of really, uh, really appealed to me. Um, so that sort of put some cogs in motion in that second year. Third year, fourth year, third year I started to get a bit tired. Um, my third year was actually my fourth year, if that makes sense. So third year in the physics department, but fourth year including the foundation year. Um, and then fourth year was predominantly lockdown. Half of third year was too. That was hard because my um, before I did started the degree, I actually did an open university module to see if I could remember any maths. And I really struggled with that. Not the maths, but the lack of interaction. I love being around people. Um, so lockdown was hard because all of that was taken away and you know I love being around people to be able to ask them questions when I get stuck but I also love having a tea break or going to the pub on a Friday um, so I'm missing missing all of that that was hard but it was hard for everybody um, but that sort of cemented that I knew that when I was looking at PhDs what kind of group that I wanted to work with um, I needed to be around people and for them to be some of them to be people, persons, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, sociable, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the thing I love about science and, and um, the research that I'm involved in is that it's so collaborative and interdisciplinary, but you know, that you share that with people. It means nothing unless you're sharing it with others. Um, so yeah, I dragged my, my ass over the finish line of my physics degree. Um, I graduated, um, for a while it sort of became a given that I was going to and that I was probably going to land a PhD, but it never really feels like that's actually going to happen. Um, but it's been nice to reflect over the last few weeks I've had some time off and sort of go, crap, I actually did it. I wasn't sure that I could even get through the foundation year and here I am. And it's been amazing. Um, I've been horrendously broke for five years, but now I have a salary stipend thing again, which is, I'm still technically a student, but it pays me way more than my job before doing physics did. So I'm happy with that. Um, and I'm also just happy in general. So I moved to London at the end of December and I'm now three weeks into my PhD with the Centre for Advanced Biomedical Imaging, UCL. Um, and I'm really enjoying that so far. I've met quite a few of the team. We went out on Friday. Uh, for after work drinks and I'm really interested in the possible avenues that my research could go down so really excited for the next chapter um, but I won't be making videos about it uh, that's just for me um, so yeah I just wanted to kind of wrap up and think about what I've learned over those last five years I've learned a lot of physics I have learned that if you think you can't do something because you're naturally not good at it, that's rubbish. Uh, if you think it's too late to change careers or try something new, that's rubbish. Um, that taking risks is hard, true, but not that hard. Obviously, it all depends on your personal, circum personal circumstances. But um, yeah, I've pushed myself completely outside of my comfort zone, but. I did it in a place where I felt comfortable and I'm hoping to do the same here in London. Um, so yeah, I just want to say goodbye to the five people that are still watching. Um, I've really enjoyed interacting with people over the years. Um, when I was at Nottingham doing open days, people would sometimes come up to me and say they'd seen my videos. That was always lovely. 
Um, people have uh, left comments, they've contacted me on social media, emails occasionally, and it's always great to hear what other people are doing and answering any questions. So these videos are gonna stay up. Um, I'm not taking the channel down or anything like that. So if you're watching this a few years from now, you're like, well, that video came out in 2021. Um, get in touch. I'm always happy to talk about uh, my experiences and answer any questions you might have if you're thinking of doing something similar. I'm gonna end it there. Uh, thanks for coming along on this crazy five-year ride. I'll see you at the pub over and out.